This is a lesson from our Flash animation course. If you want to know more about how to animate with Flash, get the full course at bloopanimation.com slash flash animation. Before we can start animating our shots, we need to know exactly what the shots are. That's where the pre-production process comes in. An animated short or film may start with a script that gets turned into a storyboard, or an artist might skip this script and just start with the storyboard. The storyboard describes and visualizes every shot in detail. But to really get a feel for how an animation is going to play out, you then need to take that storyboard to the animatic phase. An animatic is usually made by taking the frames of the storyboard into a video editing program and editing them into a video with the right timing for the final piece. But Flash is actually a really good tool for creating an animatic especially if you're going to be animating in Flash anyway. Let me show you. So I have a rough storyboard on paper that I'm referencing for this. I could scan each panel and bring those into Flash as images, but I'm just going to redraw each panel. You'll see why later. I'm using the brush tool with pen pressure turned on to keep that loose hand-drawn feel. This is much more comfortable than using the pencil tool. I've got this layer on top where I'll put the annotations from the storyboard, like arrows that describe the camera moves, and the sound effects and things. I'm just putting each panel from the storyboard on a new frame. I'm also putting in some rough tones as necessary to make the different elements clearer. Now for this shot, I'm going to use a couple layers. That way I can reuse the foreground and background and just change this layer with the character on it. So to fill in these tones, I'm using a combination of the paint bucket tool and the brush tool with the brush mode set to paint behind. That lets me paint in the color behind the black lines that I already drew. And here, this shot is basically the same as the one from earlier, so I'm just going to hold the Alt key and drag that frame to copy it. I'm just going to keep going like this for the rest of the storyboard, adding each panel to a new frame. Okay, so I've got all the panels from my board in. So if we flip through these panels, we can see we've got a fun little action sequence here. We're in a volcanic landscape where this Valkyrie is hunting a dragon. She slides down the side of this mountain and runs toward the dragon's hole, then jumps up and cuts its head off. Thud. The next step is to get the timing right. We want to make sure each frame lasts for the correct amount of time. To do that, we just need to select and drag the frames. So we just keep dragging everything out, checking the frames as we go. We're just trying to get a very rough idea of the timing right now. We're going to constantly be refining this timing throughout the process. So we've got our rough timing in here. What's our next step? Well, we've got a bunch of frames like these where the annotation layer indicates that there's a camera move. What we can do is just use what we know about tweens to put in those camera moves right now. So this annotation layer is going to be my guide for making my camera moves, but eventually I'm going to want to hide it. To do that, I'm going to set up a guide layer. I'm just going to create a new layer and then name it Guide. Then I'm going to right click on it and set it to guide mode. When a layer is a guide, anything that you put on that layer will not be included when you export or preview your movie. So this way, when I'm ready, I can just drag my annotations into that layer and then I can still reference them, but they won't be included when I preview. So to start doing our camera moves, the first thing we need to do is turn our drawings into symbols. I'm going to make each layer its own symbol, because that will give me more flexibility later. I'm going to make a symbol for my annotations here. I'm going to name my symbols after the shot they're in. 
and I'm also going to create folders to sort them by shot number. And then I'm going to make a symbol out of the drawing itself. And I'll make sure to put that in the same folder as the other one. Once I've got my symbols, they're already in place on the first frames. So then I'm going to use shift click to select those frames. And then I'm going to hold the alt key and drag those frames to the end of this shot. And then I'm going to right click to add a tween. I'm going to use classic tweens just because they're easy to set up. Then I go to the end frame and I can use my annotation as a guide for how much I need to scale these symbols. So once I've got my end position scaled, I can move the annotations onto the guide layer and hide it. Okay, so this first shot is taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and go through the animatic and do the same thing on all the other shots that have camera moves. Okay, that's everything. Let's have a look. So I've also lengthened these shots now that they have the camera moves in there. That's one of the things I was talking about when I said we were going to be constantly adjusting our timing. Camera moves are more interesting than still shots, so you're going to tend to perceive them as not being uh, as long. With still shots, if it's there for any length of time, you'll get bored with it very quickly and think it's taking forever. That's why it's good to get these camera moves in there, because it's going to be vital to getting your actual timing. You can see how much those camera moves make a big difference in making this feel like it's a real animation. So camera moves are great, but there's even more we can add in. Let's take a look at some more tricks we can do with this animatic. For that first scene where the camera is pulling in, I'm actually going to go back and break it up into four different symbols, one for each layer of the landscape. Then, if I tween those layers at different rates, we get the effect of a multi-plane parallaxing camera. Basically, the further forward a layer is, the more it should grow, and your rearmost layer shouldn't grow at all. Cool. And now for this shot where she's sliding down the mountain, we'll want to have a scrolling background behind her, and we'll also want the ground in front of her to scroll. We just need to make sure all these elements are their own symbol, and then we'll go inside those symbols and do a rough animation of them scrolling past. We'll just have a quick three drawing loop for the background, and then we'll do the same for the foreground. I've got my onion skinning outlines turned on here. That way I can check the previous frame and make sure that it looks like these lines are moving in the right direction. While I'm here, I'm going to make a quick tween of her sliding into shot. And then I'm going to make sure these are all set to graphic symbols and are set to loop. That way we can see them scroll when we scrub the timeline. And there we can see that looks about right. So for this scene where she's running towards the dragon hole, I'm just going to make sure I have her and the background as symbols, and then I can use tweens to depict her running in and I'm also going to just adjust these things so that there is a camera move here. That wasn't in the storyboard, but I'm going to add it here just because it's so easy to do with tweens. I'm going to scale everything up on the first frame so that the camera actually starts in closer on her and then widens out as she runs across the field. And now, for this section where the dragon's head falls into frame, I really want to make sure to sell the impact of that landing. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a series of tweens to animate this head falling in and then bouncing. This is an important moment in the short and I wanna make sure to sell it even in the animatic. So it falls in, goes back and forth a little, and then, then I just adjust my eases to make sure it looks like it's bouncing and not like writhing or something. It's a pretty quick bounce, but the ease is still important to sell it. Okay, I think this is gonna look pretty good. So I've gone through and applied these techniques throughout the animatic. Now as a final touch, I'm gonna to add a fade in at the beginning. To do that, I'm gonna make a black rectangle with the rectangle tool, and then I'm gonna use a shape tween to tween its opacity down to zero. I'm gonna to have to play around to get the length right. And then I'm probably also gonna to have to extend this initial shot now that there's a fade in over top of it. Then I'm gonna copy that and paste it at the end and then reverse the frames to get a fade out. So now if we preview our movie, we can see all the techniques that we've been putting in. This much better communicates the feel we're going for in the final piece. What's great about doing our animatic in Flash is that all these techniques we've been using directly reflect how the animators will build the final shots. This gives you a good idea of the complexity of your animation right away. Now we could keep going and make this even more elaborate and detailed, but what we really need at this stage is sound. That will give us a much better sense of the final piece. If you wanted, you could export this as a movie file, take it into a video editor, and add your sound there.